It contains adult themes and coarse language. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers are advised that the following program contains images of people who have died. Australia's under siege from crystal methamphetamine. Street name, Ice. Now on Ice Wars, catching the dealers is a game of cat and mouse. What are you doing? Nothing. There's messages in your phone that that's saying that you're dealing drugs to pregnant ladies. Ice. To backyard drug made of battery acid. We have ice. Violent offences are rising. Our drug-related mental illness is rising. Jared, I have to slow down, just slow down. It all comes back to ice. And for every dealer, there's a desperate user. We were stealing mail from people's mailboxes and using their credit cards, stealing their identities to get more ice. Even the best can fall into addiction. I lost a lot of time in my life. I lost valuable time with my kids. I lost valuable time with my ex-wife. But it's never too late to fight back. Life couldn't be any better. I've got a future to look forward to. Rock and roll, my friend. That's awesome. There were nearly 30,000 drug arrests across Sydney last year. Senior constables Tyler Ryan and Dale McGee operate out of Blacktown Police Station in Sydney's west. Right now we've got a problem with breaking enters. Ice is pretty rough in the area. I'm just going to go out, see what's on the street. So we can find. Here, violent female couple having a fight. Sounds physical. Okay, the ice users we deal with most of all. They're normally our, our people out there committing our stealings, our breaking enters, making sure they know we're around, keeping an eye on them, making sure they're not stepping out of line. The boys spot known meth user Ash, who's just been released from a stint in jail. The effects of taking ice, it's a big change from taking other drugs. It, it consumes them. Looks like he's doing nothing out of the ordinary. Still needs to have our attention. Ash. Good mate, what's going on? Anything on you shouldn't be? Drugs. Do I carry drugs? I don't know. Some of the boys are running around in stolen cars. You know anything about that? Or... I've been doing this a while now. And we see people over and over. <sighs> in front of the whole street. What have I done wrong? I never do anything wrong. No, no. The relationship with some people is good, there's a, a mutual respect there. With others, there's, they hate us with a passion right from the get-go of whatever interaction it is. They already got their back up. You know, we can't take a backward step to them. All right, good enough. We'll let you go home. Thank you. Cos I've got to go out tonight. Yeah. Where are you going? Yeah. I'm going to the coast. Yeah? Yes. How are you getting there? Um, walking. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, uh, no cars, man? Nah. You sure? Yeah, sort of. Oh, we're going to be in a car, really, but it's a legit car. Who's driving? Oh, my friend. Yeah? What's yeah. his name? Not Pinky. Pinky? Yeah. yeah. Nah, I wouldn't... Wouldn't trust him? <laughs> nah, I'd do my own shit, you know. All right. See you, Ash. See you, mate. That's basically an everyday interaction with um, one of our targets. We know by first name, we know him by first name. We know his family. He's known for drugs and breaking enters and all those offences since I started here. And, you know, he was a kid back then and he was, really hasn't changed. He's only just got out of jail, so. Looks like he's back on it. Yeah. Starting to get the, uh, the meth teeth.
from a policing aspect that I'm finding it's becoming more dangerous. We're probably a little bit more cautious. We have to be a little bit more on edge when we're dealing with someone with, with ice, because you don't know. They might seem fine one second and then they could turn. You think you know somebody until they take ice, and then it'll change them. And then it gets scary. It can take sometimes up to four or five police officers just to hold their arms behind their back, when before it would take uh, one police officer. Back in the charge room, convicted ice dealer Adam has been arrested. Oh, you can stay seated. Oh. Stay, sorry, stay seated. I'll pass a copy down. Stay seated. Oh, I can't see it, otherwise. I'm going to give it to you. Oh, OK. Uh, I didn't have a stable address, so they breached my parole. Signature there, an initial there, and my quote. Adam's recently got out of jail. I sold heroin and ice to support my habit, yeah. I've done an aggravated break and enter over two and a half years ago now. The ice addicts, they're causing other people out there so much pain. I mean, they're going through people's houses in the middle of the night. When they're doing that, I don't care about them because they're affecting someone's life and messing people up. Like, they might think of it as nothing, but if it's me at home in bed with my kids and someone's done that, I'm freaking out. For Adam, jail is not the only consequence of his ice addiction. I just shot up in, the, in my foot down here. I lost two toes and the bottom of my foot that deep and green, it's broke me, absolutely broke me. Like, I used to play football, it fucks your life up, mate. It's, it's putrid. It's worse than heroin, worse than coke, worse than pot. Ice is scumbag drug. It's a gutter drug. The victims sometimes get forgotten about. That's why I have no compassion for some of these people. They don't approve my disability support pension. Oh, I don't think I'll last long. If it was their choice to take it in the first place, it would be the end of me. So they're the ones to blame, and they're the ones to blame for their actions. These people make the excuses that, you know, Oh, I'm, I'm addicted to the to the ice, and that's why I do it. Well, you chose to do it, so now you have to consequences. Blacktown 180. An ice-related triple zero call comes in. It sounds like another break and enter. I think it's the best job in the world. Um, could be out there on tours or, or, or breaking your back every day. We're not doing that. Second to our life, Caucasian, that's all we have. Breaking in, I'm um, talking about ice, trying to get in the house. Which way, but you reckon? Let's go left. What's up, buddy? There he is. All in the blue black jacket, red. They catch the suspects just as they are leaving the property. Sit down. Mate, don't reach your phone. Sit down. Sit down on the ground. On your butt, mate. Come on. It's not hard. Sit down. Sit down. On your bum. No, on your bum. Look, guys, we're being reported there's a break in area. Oh, happening no, right now? No, That's what we're here for, right? You, On your bum, mate. We were just standing up the bar. We were just standing up the bar. We were just talking. Okay. We were just talking to our mate. You can go up the bar. The report is someone's door. breaking into a house. No, 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 no. You can go up the bar because right. I'm not getting done for no breaking in. Everyone sit tight. Everyone sit tight. No. That's a load of shit. All right. So what's happening here? What's the talk about ice? The property tenants deny any knowledge of ice using or dealing. Have they caused any damage here? Have they kicked the door in or? They play down the whole situation. They made threats towards you guys. Just got these guys doing a um, possible attempt break in Anna. No, so. Where's um, the owner? He's up the back with um, Dale. Does somebody yeah. want to go up there with him? Have you got ID anyway? No, I don't. You don't have ID? No. Oh, no worries. Mate, do you have ID on you? Yeah? Where is it? Have you got ID on you guys? No. no? Oh. 
I'll get it out, mate. No, no, no. Pass here. Give it here. Give it here. What's in here that you don't want me to see? Just a few streets away, the emergency services at Blacktown Hospital are struggling to cope with the soaring rate of ice use in the area. Ashley Baker manages the critical care mental health team. Almost every day of the week, police and ambulance services bring in ice users in extreme distress from using the drug. The adrenaline's going because you, you never know what's going to happen. Ash and his team must stabilise and assess them. So when people come in after using ice and they're aggressive and violent, they can be physically restrained, chemically restrained, security have to get called. So just relax, mate. Stuart, no, no, just slow down, just slow down. It's all right. You know, there's been a few times where I've been attacked. So listen, the doctor wants you to put these on, OK? So the guys here are going to put the restraints on your arms and legs. And then you'll be able to have a, be able to have a bit of a rest, all right? He was brought in by the police no, no, no. after he was found on the road, standing in the middle of the road, and he was th trying to fight the cars, throwing himself in front of the cars. He's unwell and he's intoxicated at the moment, more than likely using some type of amphetamine. So um, we need to sort of monitor and review him in the ED to see when that wears off, to then see what his baseline mental state is. At the emergency team decide whether an emergency patient stays in hospital or can be treated as an outpatient by the mobile mental health team. We get phone calls from police, ambulance, schools, uh, GPs. If there's any concerns about someone's mental health, about their risk, our team will go out to the, the person's house or wherever they're at and make an assessment. Around 40% of the patients in the lockable acute side of the psychiatric unit have used ice. He was at home when he took a massive hit of ice and he got quite paranoid about his finger that there was something sort of inside of it. So he got some garden secateurs um, and chopped it off. And we do a risk assessment and we do a mental state examination and see whether we can actually keep them in the community, either medicate, support the family, support the consumer, or whether we actually need to bring them into hospital for further assessment. He smashed up his whole car with a baseball bat and it was quite threatening towards the family. There is a paranoia and there's that persecutory flavour about him, but I haven't seen him long enough to know what's what. We see about 250 to 350 new consumers a month, which is quite a lot, so we've got to really prioritise the high-risk people. I have spoken to Mum, yeah. and Mum is saying whatever it takes to help her get better, I'm prepared to do. Ash also has another priority. He must balance his work with his home life. Listen, it's tough, because, I mean, also I've got four girls, right? So I'm supposed to be quite sensitive and understanding at home and trying to switch off from being tough and resilient at work. That's difficult. Certain days, I think, I've got to have some time by myself before I go home, just to be able to clear my head. Tracking down his outpatients who've been using ice consumes much of Ashley's time. She's not answering. Each day you're having to talk about 60 people. It's really difficult to try and follow them up. They're quite itinerant and sort of all over the place. Do you have a number? Because I've been trying to call the mobile and the mobile there's no answer to. And a lot of people also do sort of chop and change where they're going to go. So even trying to find them at at someone's house can be really hard as well. When they're using ice, you don't know when that end point is, though when do you sort of give up? Or do you keep persisting until they get that message that there is support out there for them? Yeah, but we've got to be persistent and try and make sure they sort of don't fall between the cracks and sort of not getting that support that they, they really need and deserve, so we'll get there. We've got one out of seven so far. <laughs> Many 
methamphetamine use isn't confined to the disadvantaged. ICE has spread across the country into every socio-economic group. Any human mind is vulnerable to the effects of crystal meth. It doesn't matter who you are, or what part of level of society we're in, lower, upper, middle, wherever, you can get hooked on this stuff pretty quick. Tom Carroll was world surfing champion twice in the 1980s. He was a sporting icon at his peak mentally and physically. In the men's final, the current world champion Tom Carroll of Newport won the first of the three Carroll sets. made it. With the locals. Tom first used ice in his early 40s, 10 years after retiring from the pro tour. Crystal meth came at a time when I needed to feel productive and on top of things and actually back up, especially as a father. But when I felt the effects of something that actually propped everything up, it had me. At first, I did just have it in water, sort of like having a really strong cup of coffee that lasted all day. I felt like I could focus better on what I was doing. My thinking just was super clear. Then I noticed myself wanting to call up the dealer to get a little bit more so I could use it a little bit every day. During that period of time, since 2001 to 2006, it just progressively got worse and worse and worse. Fairly, fairly steep decline. A national hero, Tom tried to keep his meth addiction a secret, but the drug was changing him. I was manic. I couldn't really hear people very well. I was in my own head, a lot of very, very loud voices. And then over time, it gets more toxic and I can feel it. I could actually feel my muscles becoming weaker. I lost a lot of time in my life. I lost valuable time with my kids. I lost valuable time with my ex-wife. And that's when I was hitting my rock bottom. You know, bouncing around the rock bottom of feeling worthless and horrible and reaching out and using again and going, oh my God, I'm stuck and really feeling trapped. And that's when I, uh, probably around November, uh, early December 2006, I went in and did treatment. Our property crime is rising, our violent offences are rising, our drug-related uh, mental illness is, is, is rising, and it's all to do with ICE. It all comes back to ICE. And at the end of the day, we as police and ambulance and fireys have to deal with the aftermath. Uh, can we get a female down here? We've got two females we need searching. After responding to the Blacktown triple zero call, Senior Constable Tyler Ryan suspects for Charles may be dealing ICE. What's with all this cash, mate? That's my rent money. Hey? My bond money for rent. That's your bond money for rent? Yeah. And the OK, how come it's folded up? I put it away so I can pay rent. How much is here? It's about $2,000. About $2,000? Well, how much is your bond and your rent? Well, the bond's going to be uh, six weeks. It was six weeks. Keep, keep your hands in your pockets, all right? No, 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 no smoking. Stick your hand in your, Keep it in your pockets, all right? We haven't done nothing wrong, sir. So how do you know this bloke? I've been friends for ages. Yeah? Yeah. If friends for ages, how come they're calling the police on you? I don't know who called the police. We're just talking. You guys use drugs? You only smoke pot? You don't do any other drugs? No. Any ice? No. No. That's how about you, mate? Are these people your friends? What are, they, friends? what are they here for? At the back of the house, Dale is questioning the man who lives here. Do you owe money? What do you do for work, mate? Nothing at the moment. So how do you save it if you don't do anything for work? I don't want to money. How much send link money do you get? 600 something. Yeah? Yeah. Here you go. Oh. Uh, so old mate reckons he was being a nice head. Yeah. 
We reckon it's all good now. Yeah. I reckon old Red Hat's got something in his pocket. Yeah. Well, I see he's all going to get searched. OK? Yeah. It's going to be a proper search. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? Nothing. What are you doing? Nothing. Bullshit. What Nothing. are you doing? I swear. I swear I was scratching my back. All right. Well, you can wait now. Just make sure that you don't take anything out of your pockets or tuck anything in your pants or put anything behind you. Now you got some handcuffs on you, okay? OK? Like I said, keep your hands out of your pockets. Keep everything where we can see them. Who's got the car keys? I think he's got them, because he was playing with something in his pocket. Come on, mate, up you up. <laughs> Just sit down. Don't go through stuff. Don't go through phones. Just sit down on your bum, please. We've got another phone here. Oh, a double D. Sweet. Kia, over there. Is that, your, is that your car? No. It's not your car. Whose car is it? Is this for the blue cow? Yeah, I was going to search him in his pants. Is it for the blue cow? Michelle. Tell us, man. We don't know what he's Michelle, you listen, don't, don't, don't mess around, all right? We're not, we're not um, here to cause you any dramas, all right? Vishal denies anything that could link him to drug dealing. Michelle, is that your car, the blue no, car? No, no, it's not there. My mate don't sell drugs. He's not. Nah, he's a family man. Cleo is a single mum and claims to be anti-ice. It's a drug. It's a backyard drug made of battery acid. Mm. Yeah, it's no good. It kills people and kills families. Yeah. You know people who are on it? Yeah. So they're not doing too good. No. Yeah. Yeah, my dad's locked up because of it. Dad's locked up from life. Yeah, rampaging houses and stealing cars and yeah. Well, that must feel strongly about it, isn't it? It's personal. Yeah, it's all right. Well, ice is not all right, but my dad's all right being locked up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Safer. Mm. Yeah. Once the other three suspects have been carefully searched, a female officer turns her attention to Cleo. Oh, that's an empty setting of ice, too. But I'm not hiding that I didn't save her. Even though Cleo has every reason to hate ice, she is carrying an empty deal bag tucked inside her bra. It's only over a little bit. OK. So we've just done a search of uh, one of the females over there. The officers located a small clip seal bag um, with some residue of ice in it. They would have had a point in here. Um, it looks like it's been used already, but the residue of the drug is still in there. Possibly not enough to charge, but we will be able to take a uh, presumptive sample of that. And if it is ice, obviously further follow-up will be conducted for that. Another indication that they're here for the supply of drugs or um, consumption. Another day, another bust. Cleo is philosophical. Wrong time, wrong, you know? Place and time, just us had to be, you know? Bad luck. Well, I think you were dealing drugs, mate. No. Ice is something where people can get a hold of it. They get this buzz really quick and it's sustained a lot longer than other drugs. You're not then getting a hangover or feeling sick like alcohol, but you do get the downs. Um, and when you're coming on that downhill crash, uh, it can be really dangerous. And that's when we see a lot of people, when they are coming down off the drug, they're feeling really depressed, quite suicidal, um, because it's, that's how it's making them feel. But to counteract that, they'll usually go out and get more, which then creates this addiction. One of Ash's patients, Michael, is trapped in this vicious cycle. He's been in and out of the hospital's emergency department after several suicide attempts. Ash and his colleague Joe have arranged to meet up with him where he lives on the streets of Blacktown. Four children, they live with ex-partner in Central Coast, works as a house renovator in the past, claims that he's an ex-football uh, player. Tall, medium build, middle-aged male, wearing a shirt which was halfly open, jeans and cowboy hat. <laughs> cowboy hat. I told you he's a real character, he's a uh, cowboy. Hey, Michael. <laughs> How are you, Michael? How are you, mate? 
Hello, Mr. Ashley. Hey, honey. This is, is Joe. Is this our funniest yeah. home videos? Or <laughs> yeah, Michael cool. lost all contact with his family when he became addicted to ice five years ago. I was pretty much happily married for 37 years. I've got four lovely kids. Uh, I stuffed up my life by hitting the ice. And I think the kids realised that something was going, going on. And yeah, I mean, it's bad shit. And I wish they'd just take that shit totally off the market, you know. Ash's job is to try to convince Michael to break the cycle of self-harm and addiction and go to rehab. And so on the plan, you're going to try and... I'm going to try getting off everything, you know. Yeah? Yeah. I've got to, because I'll end up killing myself. Okay. All right. OK. And so do you want to link in with, like, a drug and alcohol service? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll do it. OK. Because, yeah. I mean, there's... Uh, yeah, pain, no. But not today, because I've got somewhere to go, yeah, you know? Yeah, that's but right. We can set it up. Yeah. That I do, yeah. I really need, I, re I need the help. I know yeah. I do. And I've, I've, I've come close to, to stepping out in front of a, a truck a couple of times. What keeps you from not doing that? To kids. Kids. Okay. Yeah. So they're that sort of protective factor in a sense. Yeah, it just comes, hits me. Yeah. One day it'll happen. Yeah. And listen, I mean, sometimes when you hit sort of rock bottom, the only way is up, that's, you know? That's when you just want to... Yeah. OK. So how about, I mean, we'll sort of... We'll keep in touch over the phone and yeah. sort of see, cos yeah, if you go keep, out to Kingswood and then... Ringing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll make sure you... We'll try and make sure we got some support for you. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. I appreciate that. OK. So do I get 20 bucks? <laughs> I've been on TV. <laughs> Michael presents quite jovial, a bit sort of a larrikin type of guy. No, so see you later. So Bye. But yeah, certainly no, underneath no. you've got this no. depressive no. features no. that come out when talking around his children. You got a smoke? And he's a guy that fits into that high risk category because he's alone. But again, he's someone that can put on a brave face in front of in front of people. Gushar, mate, you've been identified as a person who is uh, selling drugs. No, man. And now we found all this cash, and we found two mobile phones. Why do you have two phones? Because, cool. because what? Because my family phone. One's your family phone? And this one's for my mates. Is there anything in these phones that might be consistent with drug dealing? No, it's nothing. Sure? Yeah. Vishal denies dealing ice. Text messages on his phone tell a different story. I've the had no drugs, no port, no ice, no beer since I found out. I told you I don't do drugs when I'm pregnant. So you're trying to sell to this pregnant chick? No, no, man. Well, I think you are, mate. It no. says right at you. Uh, the message says along the lines of, um, I'd appreciate if you didn't sell us any ice tonight. I want to be thinking about my baby. I'm four months pregnant. That's it's me saying. and the baby or you and your halls. Wow. It's not me, bro. Well, who, who's I using it? Who's... We trying for a baby. So it's not your phone? No. That's not your phone? It's not my name, no, no. You said it was yours. That's not your phone? It's not mine, brother. There's messages in your phone that, that's saying that you're dealing drugs to no. pregnant ladies. No. Ice. That's not my phone, and I don't do well, the drugs. You're you just, Bobby, mate. You just, no. you just told us that, that that was your phone? No. No, bro, I don't deal, bro. So let me get this straight. So, so you know this lady who's messaging <laughs> that phone, but you don't know whose phone that is. <laughs> These were your phones five minutes ago. Now they're not your no, phones. No, and you don't know whose phone that is? Someone left the phone in the car, in my mate's car, so... I... They were in your pocket? They was in your pocket? I've got nothing, man. you got nothing? We'll be seizing the phones uh, for a further investigation for drug supply, the $2,500 cash, all the telltale signs of using ice. Um, unfortunately, so far, we haven't found any ice, but I'm sure if we keep looking, we might find some. He didn't want to put himself with the car, didn't want to put himself with the phone. Obviously, because he's disqualified. It's the, the universal excuse for the money that he's paying his rent and bond like every other person. So we'll... Unemployed uh, person with gold. Yeah. Search the car, yeah? Yeah. Usually drive. Let's check that trim. Got a little centre punch here. <laughs> Little centre punch just used for smashing car windows. People doing steal from motor vehicles and stuff to get that little bit of property to get some ice. They just pop this up against the window with a hammer. Quick hit and that sharp point just shatters the window. 
And this is going to be a nice pipe. Sweet puff pipe. Yeah. Yeah. It's Used. A genuine sweet puff. To go with that is your little lighter. Oh, hello. All right, we're going to have some drugs oh. here. So we just located a uh, small plastic container. Uh, inside, there's heaps of clip seal bags. Inside each clip seal bag, and I mean every clip seal bag, we have ice at a point each bag, and there's probably six or seven bags in here. That's the first container we found. They need to find at least three grams of ice to secure a conviction for the more serious offence of dealing. Unfortunately, there's no ID in the backpack where the drugs were found. I can tell you what's going to happen. We're going to go back to those four people. Each one of them's going to deny that this belongs to them, and they're going to make us fingerprint and DNA all this stuff, which we will do. And we'll get to the bottom of it, and they'll wear some charges. Maybe not tonight, but they will wear some charges. It's a good little setup, though. I've never seen it before. Man, it's got heaps in here, bro. Scales. Oh. Got another little bag here. In another bag, Tyler discovers it's not all ice and pipes among the crystal meth crowd. Dildo? Hey, Jimpy, you got a dildo here, mate. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you sure that's what it is? I've never seen one before. It's in here. A small road ice pot. So it's definitely been used a lot. Got another dildo. So we've got a power delay spray for men, so they last longer in bed. And we've got another clip seal bag with more residue in it. It's definitely a clear indication that they are, um, they're using the, the drug ice. Ah. Big fella with the beanie. He's, he's the one who's got this stuff and the dildos. Mate, we did a quick search for the car, OK? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we located your bag in there, all right? We found the, uh, the small roadie, roadie pipe. Yeah, OK. I just wanted to know, what do you plan on doing with that? Mate, that belongs with the toys that you found from last night's event, basically. So, so it belongs with the toys from last night's event? Yeah. Is that the dildos we found in there? Yeah, mate. All right. What are you going to do with it now? Mate, I'm not a smoker. You're not a smoker? It's not mine. But it's in your possession, mate? Yeah, that's right. So if that were to stay in your bag, what, what would happen with it? It'd go back to where it probably came from last night, yeah. yeah. Who did it come from? A lady friend of mine. Your lady friend of yours? Yeah. OK. There are no drugs in his bag and no evidence of dealing in his text messages. Oh, mate, there's nothing really in there that is of interest, OK? Yeah, true. Need your phone and your ID back? The red-faced Romeo won't be charged. Yep. So Tyler and Dale turn their attention back to Vishal. Vishal, the, the car that we've just searched, that you had the keys in your pocket, yeah. okay, we located some, a bag in there. Does any of that property in that car no. belong to you? No. OK. Were you driving that car? No, I borrowed it from my mate. Were you driving it today? Just now. Yep. Hey, have you got a licence? No. Are you disqualified from driving? Yeah. I was just trying to get, get my life going. Right. We found some drugs in the car. Yeah. So at this stage, you're under arrest. You're under arrest for driving while disqualified. And I'm investigating the supply of prohibited drug. Do you understand that? No, no. Really. Well, that's, that's what I'm investigating. Do you understand what I was just said to you? You're under arrest for those things. Shit. OK. Is there anything you want to say about it now? No. OK. Have you been in trouble for driving while disqualified? No. Have you been in trouble for using drugs or? being in possession of drugs in the past. <laughs> yep. Right. Was that drug ice? Yeah. OK. Well, that's what we're looking at again. We're going to take you back to the police station with us. What started as a backyard argument over drug money has led to an arrest. But to prove that Vishal is dealing, Dale and Tyler will need to link him through DNA with the bag containing the ice. A few months after we filmed these events in Blacktown, 
Cleo died of a suspected multi-drug overdose. Residential rehabilitation centres like Duralong, north of Sydney, offer heavy ice users a chance to heal their addiction. But with only 150 beds, Duralong can't accept every addict who approaches them for help. 20-year-old Anthony is one of the lucky ones. I was a drug dealer by the age of 18. I was dealing ice and pills, so I was selling drugs to support my habit, really. My mum and dad, they raised me with everything that I needed sort of thing, and um, I don't know how I went down the path that I did. They didn't have the son that they raised me out to be. My mum, God bless her. I love it a bit now, like I always have, but when I was going through addiction, I just, I never even thought about them. It was just, I don't know how to explain it. I just didn't care about anything other than me and my drugs. You lose your soul. You lose everything, and it happens so quickly. Anthony is halfway through the 10-month recovery program at Duralong, which is run by the Salvos. Life couldn't be any better. It's amazing. I've got a future to look forward to. <laughs> Can't get the smile off my face. I'm living in paradise. I'm waking up clean and sober every day. There's nothing to complain about. I'm not isolating myself. I didn't think that I would be alive to face the consequences of my addiction. And that was three years ago now. 34-year-old Emily used other drugs recreationally before trying ice for the first time in her mid-twenties. Once I took ice, I felt amazing. I, it, it took away all my inhibitions. Uh, it gave me confidence. I didn't struggle with my feelings anymore. Emily held down a job running a cafe at first, but the side effects of her ice habit made her life impossible. When I was coming down, I didn't want to leave the house. I feel really anxious. You feel like you've been such a bad person and that you're just a piece of shit and that you're not worth it. What's the point? So my antidote to that was to not come down. I was on a reckless, destructive bender to end my life, really, all night, every night. We'd just walk around the streets at night and basically just look for ways that we could make money to get more drugs. We were stealing mail from people's mailboxes and using their credit cards, stealing their identities, all in order to make money to get more ice. I didn't have a conscience when I was on it. I didn't think about what was right and what was wrong then. And so we were arrested. That's when things really hit home for me. Sitting there in the cell, I realised um, it had gone too far. I spent seven months in jail and seven months on parole. I'm so grateful that I have been given this opportunity and that I can finally move forward and get on with the rest of life. Former tradie, now ICE user, Michael, has been living on and off the streets for years. It's been a week since Ash and Joe have caught up with him. So we've lost Michael again. Uh, we've tried calling him, his phone switched off. I've left him, I think, three messages already. The address that he's given is actually not his address. Then a call comes from another hospital. OK, cheers, bye. 58-year-old male brought in by police threatening to commit suicide. It's concerning that he's presented again. This is now 11 times in about a month and a half that he's presented to an emergency department. Oh, yeah, it's actually calling from Blacktown Hospital. He left before being seen by anyone, so 
We're not sure where he's at at the moment. We're just trying to catch up with him. Right, and he's not back there at the moment. So could I give you a number to call? If he does present there, to give us a call here at Blacktown. Do you know what address he gave to you guys? I hope that we actually catch up with Michael soon. He is a human and I hope that he's okay. So I guess it's going to be a bit of a needle in a haystack for Michael up here. I mean, there's probably a, a high risk that he's using again. Yeah. So he's not over there. So I guess here we are, the train station. Yeah, I think you've got more chance of finding Michael at the station, because this is where they sort of all congregate. Yeah. Late at night. I'm trying to find him again here. May be successful. of searching before Ash and Joe finally catch up with Michael. How are you? you haven't got your wig on today. Oh, maybe. <laughs> you, you already got a drink. What are you talking about? You've got to buy me one. <laughs> I'll buy you one. <laughs> Today's relaxation day. <laughs> so that's the way to medicate at the moment? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Is that sort of been helping when you drink, oh, yeah. or do you find that sort of also makes nah, you feel depressed? Calms me down, yeah. Just calms me down. Yeah. How, um, how's it been going? Yeah, I tried to kill myself again. Oh, no. When was that? Saturday and Sunday. What did you do? Uh, I got on the, uh, what do they call it, Lyrica. OK. Didn't yeah. work. Still can't kill myself. Yeah, but that must have been, was it obviously around sort of Father's Day? Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. OK. Still quite a sensitive. Oh, of course. You know, I haven't seen the kids for so long. Yeah. You know. Michael lost contact with his wife and kids after becoming addicted to ice in his mid-50s and ending up homeless. Run into so many people homeless, it's just unbelievable. Mm. You know, and they're doing drugs and they're on the dome and they're doing this and doing that. It's ridiculous how many people are mm. doing ice, doing. Mm. Where does it end? Yeah. Speaking of ice, have you used any? I have used it before, yeah. And have you used any recently, though? Three weekend. days ago. Three days ago? Ah, yeah. uh, what's today? Wednesday. Yeah, on Sunday I had some. Yeah. So I'm, I've given a good crack. And what did you use the ice for? Well, just to uh, stop me from crying, pretty much. Yeah. So to give you that good feeling? Yeah, yeah. You go from crying a bit more happy again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's crap. <laughs> but, you know, I, I said to you I would never use it again, but I did, you know. Mm. That's how you can get your hands on it, just like that. Yeah. Why is it that you keep on wanting to go back to use it? Ah, oh, just makes you feel good. You feel like you're on top of the castle, you know? Nothing can hurt you. Yeah? Yeah. It's pretty bad. I guess that'll be sort of a feeling that you'd want to have... Every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. You're stuck in that rut. He's now using ice. He uses it on a regular basis. He's hanging around the people that are using ice. You take it easy. So I think he's he's just caught up in a bit of a cycle at the moment. All right, All right see mate. You later, Michael. See you later, mate. All right, see you. Catch up with you. So after Michael, we saw him last and he was using. And we saw him on a couple of times and then again he vanished. Which is something what Michael does. I, I dare say he's probably got back into the drugs again. I hope not, but um, he wasn't he wasn't willing enough to go into like a rehabilitation at that stage. So, which is something that you know I, I wish he would have. I think he would have seen really good outcomes for him. Oh 
As part of his recovery from ice addiction at Duralong, 20-year-old Anthony is taking a radical path. He is learning how to fly a small plane. Yeah, pumped. I'm ready to go. I'm happy as. OK, Anthony, jump in the captain's seat, my friend. Um, you can go ahead. You've got a set of headphones there. Yep. You can put those on. Look like a pilot now. <laughs> <laughs> the key messages revolve particularly around the confidence for the young person to make decisions and actually back their judgment to control a situation that might otherwise in the past have been something that would lead them down the wrong path. Mate, I window yell out, starting engine, staying clear. Starting engine, staying clear. Okay, leaning across you again. You all clear your side? Yep. I'm gonna play mine. Today, Anthony will complete his third and final flying challenge. He'll put the plane into a stall and recover. So while we're waiting for the engine to warm up, let's have a quick chat again about that stalling consideration, right? So we, we know that today we're going to take the aeroplane out and we're going to turn it into a brick. So we're going to go aeroplane, stall, brick, recover. But this is all about trouble, remember, in life, coming and us seeing that happen. And then if we do the first thing that comes in our mind, if we just react, we generally do the wrong thing, don't we? Yep. You know, and that brain's not in the game. But if we can just stop and say, what do I need to do to recover and get out of this? We go, ha, Simo said, I've got to lower the nose and smoothly push the power up. We're going to recover from the stall and go back to being an airplane. And that's the concept in life. That's the key message from this flight I want them to take away, which is you are smart young people. You can see trouble coming. If you think about those factors when things are going off the rails and we apply a well thought out game plan to how to avoid that trouble, we'll never get there. Traffic mate, little room in November, extra in or backtrack, runway uh, 23426, mate. Okay, smoothly full power, all the way forward. Use your feet, all the way forward, all the way forward, feet. Full power, full power. Let's go flying. Ease back. Oh, yeah, here we go. Not too steep, not too steep. Ease forward, ease forward. You just want to see that horizon, right? Beautiful. There we go. Keep those wings nice and level. Oh, yeah. He's on it. <laughs> nice work, my friend. You keep steering there. <laughs> I had an ex-girlfriend that committed suicide when I was with her and I had a lot of emotions running up inside of me and I turned to ice because you don't have any emotions, like everything just gets blocked out and you're just thinking about you and that drug and what you're going to do to get more. As long as I had that drug, everything was all right. Nothing could hurt me and nothing could stop me. Going off still. At Blacktown Police Station, Dale and Tyler have arrested Vishal. If he is going to be charged with dealing, they need evidence of carrying three or more grams of ice. We've got him disqualified driving. We're investigating for supply of a drug. Got a bunch of ice. He's claiming it's not his, but we need to get the bottom of it. When Tyler looks up Vishal's criminal record, he finds a long list of driving offences. But Vishal's never been convicted for dealing drugs. Muskie's legal aid card, his barrister card. Vishal has been jailed for driving offences. He's also disqualified from holding a licence until 2032. So $2,700 cash. So, Vishal, 
Huh? We counted it. $2,700. Seized as being further investigation, OK? Tonight he'll be charged. The offences that we'll probably charge him with tonight are um, the driving while disqualified, we needed to. Um, and we'll look into the goods in custody or a deal in the proceeds of crime, being the cash. And we'll do further investigations with the drugs. Got a little container here. That comes into 0 0.25, so I'm expecting all of these to be at the 0 0.25 side of things. 0 0.28. Roughly, we, we find it's around the 0 0.25 uh, gram um, weight mark when they're coming in little clip seal bags like this on the street level. So um, yeah, I'd say that would probably sell for about 50 bucks. Six, seven, so we've got eight clip seal bags just in this one little container. It's just over two grams. The best that Tyler can hope to do is charge Vishal with possession not dealing. But the problem is, there was no ID in the bag. So unless a DNA swab can link Vishal to the drug stash, the police can only get him for the driving offences. He's very comfy in there. I'd say he's been there uh, a few times. He's on parole for driving whilst disqualified. I think he'll be in for a little bit on this one. Nice and comfy in there. If he gets charged for the possession of the drugs or the supply of the drugs, it's not here nor there, really. It's, we've got the drugs off the street. Um, they're not going to be used. It's not going to cause any more chaos out there on the streets, but um, it'd be nice. It'd be nice for it all to fall into place and us be able to charge the person that actually was in possession of him. Forensic Lab was unable to link Vishal's DNA to the stash of ice. The court imposed a one-year jail sentence for driving without a licence. So, Vishal will get his $2,700 rent money back when he gets out of jail. How good, look at this already, eh? Different perspective on the world. Beautiful, we love it. 20 year old recovering ice addict Anthony has had just two days of intensive flight training. He's about to put this small plane into a stall and try to recover from it. So we've done all our checks, so our stalling sequence is safe. Okay? When the aeroplane stalls, that nose is going to be way high and the stick's going to be all the way back, right? And then we'll feel that shutter, nose is going to drop, and at the point the nose drops, we're now brick. And if we just reacted, remember what I said, if we just went, ah, I'm falling, I need to pull back, what would happen if I just kept pulling back? Oh. That's right, we're going to keep going like that, aren't we, until we hit the ground. That's not cool. The concepts that we're working on are the fact that life throws us curveballs. If we understand the problem and we've thought about it, I can slow down, I can get my brain in the game, and I can then apply the correct recovery. So you're ready for the stall? Ready. OK. So smoothly back on the throttle. All the way back. Okay, now pull back with your hands. Nose is high, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, all the way back, all the way back. There's the stall. Now, if we're just like, I'm in a stall, I'm freaking out, right? Look at this, what's happening? Going crazy. Right, look at this. Airplane's going down, isn't it? Yeah. So we're falling towards the ground in a stall. So how do we recover? Let's go ease forward, power up, and pull back on the wheel now. Air speeds up. Recovering from the dive. Happy days, we're back out, we're an aeroplane again. Sweet as. We didn't react, we thought, we got the brain in the game, and we acted. Yeah. 
you've been in places in the past where you go, I get into trouble when I do X, Y, and Z, don't you? Yeah. But when I go there, when I mix with those people, it's trouble. So you got to see that coming and go, ah, that's trouble there, and I've got to change course or do something, these forward power up in order to avoid it. Rock and roll, my friend. That's awesome. Nice work. If he makes the right choices consistently, thinks about risk, takes good risk, avoids bad risk, then his opportunities are limitless. Enjoy that. It's pretty satisfying, isn't it? Eh? Yeah, Happy days. Happy days. Being up there and being able to get the plane back in control and it's stalling, that was incredible. That was an amazing feeling. But um, yeah, I reckon it's just, it helps me a lot because it makes me realise what I can do when I'm not in addiction. Next time. Police battle organised crime syndicates. Jackie Lambie acts to save her son. I'm a senator of Australia and I have a 21-year-old son that has a problem with ice. I just hated her. You know, I really hated her for a long time. I don't want to lose my son, and I'm certainly not going to lose him without a fight. The alarming effects of ice on our military. We'd go to work on Monday with all the effects of ice, and we'd be in the armoury cleaning weapons. Can't really tell you how we didn't get caught. An alternative to jail that helps break the cycle. I want you to be in charge of your life. I don't want to be in charge of your life. And a call to action. We need to support those people who are suffering as a community as a country. We really need to actually turn around and support recovery. There's already things there that are working, but no, we have these idiots up here in Canberra that want to go and reinvent the wheel. This is what really, really frustrates me.